All right, so last time we managed to move over this bar a little bit, um, but we still have some problems with it. Note that I've made a couple of changes in the interim. Um, among those I've done, um, here's the aside. I've added in a margin of 10 pixels and a padding of 1M, and I changed the font size to 0 0.8 uh, M. So that made the font a little smaller, and it gave us a little bit of more space, a little bit more space here to work with. Um, but it hasn't solved our major problem, which is that things are flooding to the right. Also, you'll note that down here, there's a little bit, I don't know, depending on the color of, of how YouTube renders it, there's a little bit of, of space here between these two because of our margin, but it doesn't seem that the margin's working here. There's no space between the two, right? Well, part of the reason for that, if we look in Firebug, is that if we look at the section main, there's the box for the section main. It actually is kind of running underneath um, the uh, the aside section. If we look at aside, it's right there, but the main kind of runs through the whole thing. So one of the tricks we can do to keep things over here on the on the left hand side is to um, is to actually say, okay, we want a much bigger margin from the side here. So if we increase this margin, right, it would move over over here, but it would also move over up here. Now we know that this particular one is 250 pixels wide. So what ha what would happen if, for example, uh, in the section right now we have a margin of 10 pixels, that means 10 pixels all around. What if it was 10 on the top, 260 pixels on the right, um, 10 on the bottom, and 10 on the left. On the left. We'll save that and we'll refresh it. And you'll see that it's actually moved over, not enough to see the to see the break in the margins, because if you look here, it's still a little too big because it's overlapping a bit, because we have the the extra margin and padding in here. So again, we'll have to play with it a little bit and actually make it um, more like um, 280 maybe. We could have added that up and known, but because we're using an M instead of the pixels, it's a little tough. Oh, getting closer at least. Let's see what those two look like. Here's the aside. Here's the main. We're still touching. So we'd still have to play with that a bit more. Let's get ridiculous here. We'll refresh it. And there we have, it's too big. We'd have to play with that some more, but we have roughly the idea of how to get it over there on the right hand side, and things kind of work out to two columns. Um, now, the problem with this, there's a couple of problems with this. Um, one of the problems with this is that if this stuff is too short, it ends up with, um, with the footer being on this side of the, uh, sidebar. It doesn't happen usually, right? Because usually the main content's going to be longer than the sidebar. But just in case you need to put in something in the footer that says clear both. Basically what clear does is it says, okay, remember what I said about the float? Just forget all about the floating and let's start over from scratch. So it moves it back over and starts over from scratch. This is a particularly nice way. This is a very common way, by the way, to make two, a two column layout. It's a particularly good way to do it because as you can see, depending on the size of the screen of the person using it, if it gets too small, you have a problem, but depending on the size of the screen, it actually will kind of shape the text um, uh, for that screen. That can be very useful um, for what this is called liquid layout for people that are, have very small screens or very large screens, and so it, you don't you don't have big huge gaps on their screen. Um, now you may want to put some maximums on that, but generally speaking, it's a good way to go.